to get started with the PyBrick micro Python programming on EV3 Brick. So here's our agenda today. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, self-introduction. Then we'll cover uh, why we chose Python to begin with, uh, followed by some basic installation instruction. We'll spend most of our time on a live demo to cover basics about uh, coding, debugging, and primarily focusing on how to code, making coding uh, and uh, debugging easier. Um, that's a very important part for especially beginners, because uh, if you understand all the different tools available for you to make it easier, it's much easier, much easier to, to continue on instead of getting frustrated and stop earlier. After that, at the end, uh, we'll answer some questions. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have a, a bunch of links uh, I'm going to use in this demo on the last slide. And this slide will be shared across. Don't worry, so don't worry about uh, writing the links down or taking a screenshot. You will have everything being shared with you afterward. So who am I? My name is Yannick Yu. Uh, I spent uh, 20 years in software engineering. Currently, I'm a senior software engineering manager in cybersecurity. Uh, first Lego leak is uh, relatively new to me. Uh, this year is my second year as a first Lego league challenge coach mentor on uh, also on the EV3 programming. So everything starts with the why. So why we chose Python and MicroPython. So before we get there, let's uh, go through a few facts. First of all, uh, Python happens to be the third most popular programming language in the world behind Java and C. This is as of 2020, the latest data. Also, as a scripting language, it's a rel relatively easier to learn, perfect for beginners. Now, when I said uh, it's easy, easier to learn, comparing to something like EV3, it might still take more effort to get it started. However, as a text-based language, it's much easier than something like Java and definitely a lot easier than C. So this is great language to begin with if someone wants to do some uh, serious programming um, like the text-based language for programming. MicroPython is a super efficient version of Python running on microcontroller, while PyBricks builds on top of MicroPython runs physically on the Lego smart hubs, for, for example, the EV3 brick like this one. Um, now let's come back to the why again. So almost just like everything else we do with first Lego league, I, I know I'm a bit of new, relatively new to this, but uh, Based on what I observed, based on what I've seen, just like uh, almost everything we, else we do with first Lego league, it's all come down to core values. Uh, picking using Python happened to demonstrate the three out of the six uh, first Lego league core values. The first one is discovery. This one is relatively straightforward. Uh, the reason being um, we learned something new, right? The, the Python is new to my entire team, uh, not new to me, uh, but it's new to my, my team members. Uh, most of them have some experience in the past with P EV3 programming. So picking up something new, I think is a great way to learn, to, to discover, to learn something new. The second one is the impact. I mentioned about Python being the third most popular programming language in the world, right? Python is literally everywhere. You can use Python to write almost anything, like a client application, server application, web application, data science, machine learning, the list just goes on. Um, and they're being used by many different industries as well, not only IT, not only high tech. For example, um, I'm aware many pharmaceutical companies also use, also use Python. Just, just think about it for a moment. Imagine somewhere right now, somewhere some companies are using Python to develop, develop uh, vaccines to help fighting COVID-19. So in 2020, in year 2020, I don't think it can bring more impact than that. So. That, that's, that's a very important part of Python because you can do a lot with it. The last one, teamwork, this one is uh, quite interesting. I have a very, quite a small team right now. So I have only three team members, but inevitably we have both Mac users and Windows user. So we have a Mac girl, we have a two Windows boys. Um, now when, we, when I started to look into a solution, what, what to use for programming, the timing was a bit of tricky. At that time, the Scratch-based EV3 classroom was not released yet. Well, so not released on Windows yet. Uh, the EV3, LabVIEW-based EV3, like the one everyone else been using, 
everyone else as last year can be using was no longer supported on the latest macOS. So on macOS, you had to use a scratch-based one on Windows. You had to use the, uh, the, the, the LabVIEW-based one. So at that time, um, I feel strongly that uh, like everyone in my team should participate to every single element of the entire first level deep journey. I don't want anyone to be left out just because they don't have a Mac or they don't have a window. So I was quite committed to find a solution would work on both Mac and Windows. Uh, after some digging around, I realized uh, at that time at least, MicroPython happens to be the only option. Like uh, with the, all this software, I'm going to introduce all of them work on both platform. You can work on uh, Mac and Windows using the exact same environment and uh, writing the same code, uh, working on the same code. So that's uh, one of the primary reasons we, we started looking to explore Python uh, as an option. Of course, shortly after that, I said the timing was a bit tricky. Shortly after that, the Scratch-based EV3 Classroom uh, was introduced, uh, released on Windows. So that's no longer uh, uh, um, the primary reason. However, now you look back, I mentioned about the three different uh, core values, right? You look at the other two, discovery and the impact. I just, there's no reason for me to, or, or for the team to go back to, to like a Scratch-based one because we already chose Python. So we're sticking to it. Um, to summarize it, you know, uh, uh, using Python is something, code is something we do, but the core values are really the reasons why we're doing that. To summarize it, that, that's really, that, that all come down to core values. Uh, for my personal opinion, actually there's a fourth element to it, which is fun. I haven't quite uh, convinced my entire team yet, like learning Python is fun. I'm still trying my best, uh, but uh, I believe at the end of the, Session, session, everyone uh, here hopefully will get convinced Python is not scary. Take, take a look at this logo. How could this be, be scary? The micro Python, that's a micro Python logo. It's not scary at all, especially for someone who have some EV3 programming language uh, pre experience. This is something quite straightforward to convert to, to pick up. And I really highly recommend uh, more teams to give it a try. So now I'd like to talk about the basic uh, instru installation instructions. So what do you need hardware? First of all, you need an EV3 brick. Uh, Spike Prime, the new generation of the Smart Hub, is not yet supported. I want to make it clear here. It doesn't mean the Spike Prime does not support a micro Python at all. It just means the uh, uh, Pi bricks, like the one we're using today, the entire environment, is not compatible with the Spike Prime yet. Spike Prime, I, did a, I don't have one uh, myself. Um, I really like to try it one day, but uh, as far as I understand, it does have some support for micro Python, excuse me. It's just not the, the type of environment we're going to use today. That's why I make it clear uh, what you're going to see today would work on EV3 Brick, but not on Pi, Spike Prime yet. Uh, I do expect in the near future, things will change. But as of today, if you want to use Pi Brick for my Python, uh, uh, micro Python programming, uh, you need to have an EV3 brick. You need a Windows or a Mac. I already covered that. Uh, uh, technically, I believe this should also work on Linux, uh, but luckily I don't have a Linux girl or a boy on my team, so I don't really need to worry about it right now. Keep my finger crossed. Hopefully I don't ever need to, to worry about it. Uh, the third one you need is just a micro SD card. It's uh, between four gigabytes to 32 gigabytes with adapter. The reason you need adapter is uh, you need to use your computer, either a Mac or a Windows, to image, like to, to burn an image to your micro SD card. The whole Pi brick image actually lives on that card. And once you plug into the card into your robot, your EV3 brick, uh, and your EV3 brick will run the software from that card instead of from the built in firmware. So that's where you got all this micro Python uh, uh, support. Last but not least, the uh, internet connection. So for this one, no brainer, right? But uh, something I want to highlight is uh, for what we're going to cover today from end to end, you will need at least eight different pieces of software to get everything work together. The basic instruction covers four. So this is the link for that, the basic instruction. I have it open here, for a matter of fact, this is from uh, Lego Education. Again, you don't need to worry about the link, writing it down anything because I, I will have everything shared on the slide and I'm going to share it across afterward. So anyone can just go through that to get all the links you need. So we are not going to, we are not <clears throat> going to go through this step by step today. The reason being 
first of all, you know, Lego Education did a great job to put this together with not only the step-by-step -step guide, images, links, also YouTube clips, everything. I don't think I can do better than that. So I would like to share the, the, the link for everyone who want to give it a try to just go through it uh, to set up everything. Uh, second, we don't really have too much time for it the, 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 today. The, the guide itself is 17 pages. Uh, from my opinion, it's fairly straightforward to follow through, but it takes time to go through the step-by-step. -step. So I would recommend, highly recommend, whoever wants to give it a try, just follow through this. It should be no problem at all to set it up. At the end, you will end up uh, finding, a, uh, end up uh, uh, having the card ready and the, uh, running from the brick. And you will have the software, like all the environment set up. So just go through that instruction. We're not going to do that today, just because we don't have time. And that's a very put the, well put together one. So that's why we're not going to cover it step by step today um, here. Now, I mentioned that we need this eight pieces of software to get this thing to work entirely end to end. I'm going to cover the other four, which are not covered by the instruction, but it would definitely make your coding, the debugging experience a lot easier which is again, very important for, for beginner. Uh, Micro Python looks cute, but if you don't know how to use it, you will still get frustrated. So now live demo begins. Uh, first, I wonder, does anyone know why I have a bunch of a freaked out of minifigures here? Okay, let me, let me tell you the answer. I chose this uh, picture for a reason. Uh, for my opinion, live demo is the best way to demo something in real. However, it's also the most risky one. The reason being um, for a live demo, quite often you have many different moving parts. Now for this one, I mentioned we have eight pieces of software. We also need to use a Zoom, we need to use a Chrome, just a lot of moving parts. If anything, any of, uh, anything um, um, breaks, the whole demo would fall apart. So because of that, it's, a, it's the most risky one, but also the best option because but whenever you do a live demo, both audience and the presenter would learn something new from it because it's interactive and you're dealing with all the new things instead of just a slide and the mock-up and the recording. Um, being said that, it's also kind of fun. Right? You don't know what to expect. So it's a fun part. So it's coming back to the core values again. It's, it's, it's a, this is a great way to do a demo and it's kind of fun to do that. That's why I chose to do a live demo instead of a recording. Um, so wish me luck. And without further ado, let's get it started. So once you have everything sorted out after following through the instruction, you should land here. So this is something called the Visual Studio Code. This happens to be the one of the most popular uh, development in uh, tool uh, in the world where you, in the world right now being used by millions of, uh, if not the tens of millions of uh, professional developers out there. Visual Studio Code itself is not a not a not a compiler or interpreter. Like a, like a, you can use to, to compile Java right away, but it is being designed in a very generic way so that you can support almost any language by going through, by using these extensions. So the instruction I mentioned earlier with that link, uh, you would end up installing the final to where to download and the install Visual Studio Code. And you also end up uh, installing two extensions. Um, so this one is the, uh, I already have it installed because at the end of the instruction, you're going to land here. So this one is the official Lego Mindstorm CV3 uh, MicroPython extension. Uh, basically, it covers the, um, the basics for the MicroPython support for EV3. The other one is called the EV3 Dev Browser. This one handles all the connection with your, your EV3 robot, EV3 brick. So these two combined together, that gives you, and plus the, uh, the PyBricks, uh, like a micro uh, SD card we talked about with that image. With these four pieces of software, now you can get started with the basic programming. Once you have Lego installed here, you will see a new icon. And uh, you click on this, you can probably recognize the pattern. This is the, uh, the, the, how it looks like on the EV3 brick, the button. Um, there's a few different options. Uh, we're going to use the first one to create a new project first. And we'll come back to this because there's a quite a very helpful, useful uh, example project under here, but we'll come back to that. Uh, first, let's start with a new project. And give it name. Let's call it the uh, uh, Hello World. And choose the location. 
the uh, plugin the extension does a few magic create a bunch of files for you. So that's where you are. And you will see quite a few files being created. They're always accessible from under this tab. Um, and the only one, as of right now, the only one you need to worry about, you need to, only one really matters is this one, the main.py file. Uh, with a first glance, it might look a bit of a busy because you see a bunch of lines, maybe most of you really don't really know what it's all about, where these lines are all about. But keep that in mind, you don't need to change anything. This is all generated for you. You don't need to change anything, anything above this line. So everything from here to the top, you, you don't need to change them. You can just leave them as it. For every single program you create, you can just reuse, do the same thing. You don't need to touch them at all. I'm going to go through this to, to explain what they, what they are, but uh, you don't need to write them. So that makes it a lot easier for you to get it started. For this program, the only thing it does really is just the EV3 speaker beep. And uh, it's quite a, you know, Python is a very great language for it because it's very close to the natural language. So it's much easier to read. So this one, what the only thing this program, the entire program does, it just beep. On this uh, break, the beep once and exit. Then I want to, before we go any further, uh, you, you can actually run this on the on the break right now, but it's kind of boring because it doesn't do anything. So I will leave it there. Before we go any further, I'd like to compare this with the EV3, the lab wheel based EV3. I think most of the uh, most of the um, uh, teams probably are already familiar with. So this is the lab wheel. If you minimize it a bit. So this is a lab view based uh, EV3. Uh, but you can compare these two, although it looks a bit of a, as I said, a bit of a busy, uh, but uh, it's like the two sides of the same coin. They're fundamentally are the same thing. The reason why I'm saying that is, for example, here are all the different blocks you have under EV3. You have uh, logic um, loops, uh, condition uh, blocks. And uh, with Python, this is all built into the language. You don't need any special treatment or classes for that. So it's all supported. All these mass related ones, they're all supported and variables are supported. So they're all built in the language. Then when you come to something more specific to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, to the EV3 uh, brick, for example, the, the sensors, uh, the speakers, button, screen, large motor, medium motor, let's say, large motor. You see a large motor, a large motor here, and if you drag it over, you can do something interesting with it. The block and different things you can do, different way of controlling that. But if you look at the, the Python script, you know, here's the motor class. These two, although they look different, but they're really exactly the same thing. You have a motor class, you can, there's a bunch of functions being included in the motor class. You can use this class to control the motor, they rotate the clockwise, counterclockwise, can change the speed, do a lot of things with it. So this is really, really just equivalent to the uh, motor uh, block here. And here you have med medium, that, that class actually control both large or medium uh, motor. And there are two like a move steering and move tank. And here you have something equivalent, it's called the drive base. What is drive base is uh, instead of controlling one motor, you control two of them. And you can use these two wheels to control, navigate the robot, move forward, backward, rotate, spin, everything. And it's almost identical to what we can do with these two. So it's like one to almost one to one mapping. And the other two, three, the button, speaker, and uh, the screen, they happen to be all under the brick. It's called the EV3 brick, and then you already have a instance of it. Um, then you can do all these different things. For example, the speaker, this is called EV3 dot speaker dot beep that ask the EV3 brick to beep. It's that simple. You can do exactly the same thing here by using this one. Oh, actually we already have a block here. Uh, play, play a tone, uh, specify a frequency, then exactly doing the same thing. Um, so it, it, it looks a bit of different, but uh, uh, ultimately they really are very close. Another example is the, the other sensors. So you use those sensors for, getting around the follow lines to control the rotation and everything. And by, when you look at, uh, let's say, the ones uh, being mo used the most, the color sensor, for example, the gyro sensor, if you go back here, you have a class for color sensor, you have a class for touch sensor, you have a class for infrared, ultrasonic, and the gyro sensor. So you have everything already provided here. So you can work with your sensor, you can read the value, you can monitor value, do a bunch of things, different type of uh, uh, value from them. And it's almost identical to what you can do with, uh, with, this, uh, with this block. 
for example, the color sensor, uh, like a read value, you can measure color, uh, reflected light intensity, ambient light intensity. Uh, they look different, of course, you know, because you know, we're, we're using the text-based lang language, not the, not the, the visual block-based. But uh, they're fundamentally really the same thing. So, so it's really something I want to just repeat, <coughs> reiterate. Uh, if you have easy three programming um, experience, switching to micro Python 3D should be quite uh, natural. It's like a, it's it's like a, like like comparing you watch a movie to reading a book. You might be watching really the same story. Uh, motion movie might be a bit easier, uh, but there's been <clears throat> someone created that imagination for you. Um, then there's quite a lot of limitation what you can do, you can, you can get from a movie. But the reading a book quite often has a lot more details that you can use all the imagination, the flexibility, uh, when you, uh, not flexibility, but using your imagination when you read a book, because it's just has much deeper uh, and uh, quite often much a lot more uh, content in the book, even they are talking about the exact same story. It looks a bit of different text-based, but uh, it's also a lot more flexible and powerful and especially when the code become more complex, the text-based one, <clears throat> like MicroPython, you tend to be a lot more easier to manage, not like the, the graphic-based one. Uh, once things become more complex, you tend to be much, much, much longer, become a lot harder to control, to manage. All right, so let's come back to the code. Um, <clears throat> this one, a bit of boring. So I'm going to change it a little bit. Uh, we change it to something quite interesting with MicroPython, you can do something out of the box like the EV3 break cannot do. Uh, you can, it, can, can, it can talk. Something like this, for example, it's a very simple program. Just, you just ask the robot to say something. Let's see, uh, I'm not sure how close you can see the robot, but you can clearly hear that. I'm placing it very close to the mic. So what do you do once you have it ready, just press FY, F5. Then it's going to ask you to connect to the robot. So click connect. You don't. You need to do it. Uh, uh, if you don't use a robot, after a while, it will time out. It's going to uh, no longer connect it. Uh, but you can just click the connect now. It's going to connect again. So listen. I am a robot. Hopefully you heard that. It's uh, very close to the mic. So yeah, it's pretty fun, like the little ro this robot that actually can, can, can speak. You probably don't need that for first Lego leak, but for practice, for debugging purpose, there'll be something handy. Let's try something a bit different. For example, let's try to do a, uh, create a, let's create a function, let's say, uh, test. Uh, Hello world again. You don't need to worry about too much about this all mean right now. It's just for showing how to do the uh, how, to, how to do debugging. So here's a very simple program. Uh, let's just run it again to see what that really does. See here, after saying I am a robot, it's going to run this test print. It goes through here, it's a simple, very simple loop to print out the hello world for five times from zero to four. Um, so for something very simple, as simple like this, it should be all fine. Like you don't really need too much, to worry too much about how to debug, like in case your, your code goes wrong. But what if you, let's say you had a typo, let's say you set up EV3, put in the EV4, and maybe you forgot to put in the columns. It's a, very common uh, mistake for beginner when they kind of start to use Python because it's quite different to see in the Java. So what if uh, you, you you have some issue like this? You see, keep, keep that in mind. By looking at this with a quick glance, it's very hard to see if there's anything wrong, right? Um, so I'm going to show you afterwards to see if there's something you can do to help you to find these issues before even 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 you upload to the robot. So right now, let's try to run on the robot to see how everything goes, you will start to see some error. So here, like uh, you load to the robot, takes a few uh, seconds to, to load and run, and you see the robot did not say anything, right? Did not hear anything. But you will see here, there's a error. Saying it's a, there's a line 15, you look at here, line 15, 
you probably realize actually it's here, you're missing something. You can put it back in uh, and try again. You will see another error because the EV4 is, cannot be recognized because it had a typo. So is there something we can do better instead of trying over and over again to, uh, to see where there might be wrong with your code? For a simple code, you might be able to get away, as I mentioned. But when things get more complex, uh, how to making coding easier, debugging easier become crucial. Otherwise, uh, even for the adult professional developers could get uh, frustrated very quickly. If you don't know where, let's say you write 200 lines of code, when you start to uh, run it, you might run into like uh, 50 different errors. It will take a long time to get everything sorted out. It's just not efficient, not easy to use. And one thing might not be that uh, obvious right now is um, the, the, as of right now, it, it might sound a bit of a strange, but as of right now, Visual Studio code does not, here, does not know anything about Python yet. The reason being PyBricks uh, Py actually runs on the EV3 brick. So we are basically loading the entire program to the brick and the brick would read the program and uh, interpret it and uh, to run it on the robot. If there's something wrong, the robot will come back to show you complain some errors. But until then, you have no idea uh, what might be wrong with your code. Again, this is a typo, right? But by looking at this, it's just not hard, not easy to see. The reason being, we don't, the, the, uh, this Visual Studio code doesn't know anything about Python yet. But is there a way you can uh, make Visual Studio understand the Python, help you to find these errors, uh, even to try to test uh, this uh, your code on the computer, even without, uh, before you upload to the robot? Or even, is that possible to, to try, try your program even without uh, a robot? Of course, there are a way to do that. Otherwise, I would not ask. I'm going to show you how to do it. And that's a very powerful way to debug uh, and to, to before, uh, find the issue before even they start to, uh, to cause problem. So first thing first, I mentioned uh, uh, the I mentioned uh, we, we it doesn't understand the Python yet because we do not have a Python interpreter installed on this machine. Uh, you can call it a Python interpreter or a Python engine because it's scripting language, not a compiler, but it doesn't, it's not important. The important part is you need something who can read the Python code, understand it and run it. So for that case, you do need to install Python, for this case, Python for Windows, but the same link would lead to you to the Python for Mac. For the Mac user, you can come here and you can use like support with Linux as well. Uh, I have it already installed, uh, downloaded just for save some time. So I'm going to just launch it here. Going through this, it should be fairly quick. Uh, before you start uh, click install now, I do recommend you click add Python to pass first. By doing that, it will make it much easier for you to run the Python script and their command line shell without uh, the need to try to find it first. But ignore that. Just click that uh, bo uh, check this box before you install. The rest of it is straight straightforward. It takes a bit, about a, maybe a minute or so to get installed. Meanwhile, let's come back to this. and wait until they get it ready. So let's start to search for the some uh, Python um, extension. So why you need a Python extension? So you have the Python. Um, interpreter install, install the first. So you have something on the, your system can understand and run Python for you, great. But you still need to connect this with your Visual Studio code because this is your environment, which you use to, uh, to do all the, you know, um, it's integrated the development environment to help you to do all the debugging and the syntax highlighting, everything, all the good things to make it easier to use. And the, this extension serves more like a bridge between your Visual Studio code and your Python. Okay, this is all done, you can close it. You don't, quite often you don't need to open that uh, again uh, for the first Lego League of programming because you do everything here else in Visual Studio from, from, from this moment down. Uh, pay attention to this number. So this Python extension alone had uh, 25 million downloads, 25 million downloads. I'm probably responsible for like a 12 dozen of it because I've been trying to uh, part of preparing for the workshop, try different things and so I installed it many times, but still there might be somewhere between 10 million to 20 million unique users, developers out there are using this alone. That shows how popular this Python is. So install it first. 
Another one we it's installing, but another one uh, we want to install is called the PyLens. Uh, this one it's a it's called a language server. It might be a bit hard to language server. This word is relatively new; it just came out a few years ago. Actually, it's a concept under view code, but uh, let me install it first. Um, so it's about put it this way: it's more like a your coding body or assistant in a way. So what it does is you install PyLens, then this plugin will continuously monitor your code and to remind you in case there are any errors or there's something like syntax uh, highlighting and uh, give you some recommendations based on what you're trying to do to make your coding a lot easier. Just think about this, your coding body. You don't have to use it, but by using something like this would make your coding a lot easier. So let's try to click here, yes, and reload. Let's reload the PyLens uh, language server. So now you have four plugins. That's all you need for, uh, for the uh, for, uh, MicroPython programming. So let's come back to this. Uh, it will take a bit of time to, a few seconds, okay. Now you can see something different. Probably some of you have noticed, uh, you can see here the EV4 being marked. Anyone knows why it's being marked? It's because the language does not understand what is EV4. So basically that means uh, PyLens is telling you hey, this might be a mistake. So when you see there's something you marked EV4, you can change it back to EV3. Now this warning goes away because now they understand, okay, this is EV3. This is a, this is, there's no typo there, which is great. But there is still a problem. So all these things, see, they're all being marked as error, which means uh, the, the program doesn't understand, PyLens doesn't understand what they are. Why, why is that? Um, that's because the Pi brick itself, as I mentioned, actually does not exist on this machine right now. It exists on the EV3 brick. On the EV3 brick, this one just works totally fine, no problem. But here, because you don't have this defined anywhere, so they are being treated as something undefined. Uh, and because of that, uh, it, this being marked as all errors, you still can run the program, but it just doesn't it doesn't, doesn't help because all these things are being treated as something invalid on your computer, but on, not on your EV3 brick. How to address that? Now, there's of course a way to do that. Let me go back to uh, command line shell. So what you need to do is to install my bricks. No, don't, don't worry about all this command line. I have everything recorded and uh, on that uh, last slide. You can always go back to it as a reference to set up everything by following that, uh, following along. So let's install it first. Then after that, it's, uh, you need to close and reopen. Pay attention here. If you realize, you'll notice here, coming up. you will no longer be marked as errors. The reason being, you will now actually have all these things installed. So let me go open uh, one, for example, the motor. So when, before I installed the Pi bricked, uh, the, the, I forgot to mention this one, PIP is a Python installation package manager. So you used to, to install some extra package, like what you need. And you only need to do it once. Once you're done, you're done. You don't need to come back to this again. Um, so once you have that done, this is all this code being installed by that script, which basically covers all the different classes we are going to use, we need to use as part of the pipe bricks. And uh, because of that, uh, the pipelines no longer complains. You can, like everything looks normal. When you see, for example, uh, I mentioned the EV3, uh, EV4, uh, that's going to be marked as an arrow. And if you use something like uh, uh, so for this one, let's say you find the ev 3 speaker dot. So now it's being grayed out. The reason why it's being grayed out is because the pylons can understand your code. And because this is a, this is loop will never end. So this code becomes dead code. That means you'll never be able to reach that. So Pylons will give you all kind of uh, um, um, help, recommendations to point out some potential errors. And also something like, uh, uh, let's use the motor, for example. Let's say we have a motor uh, equals to motor. See here, 
because you have pylons and because you got the, have the pipe break uh, installed, you can, whenever you try to use some of these class, uh, pylons would give you some recommendations and uh, comments uh, while you start to, just while you're typing. Like for this case, I'm, I want to create a motor object. Then this one tells you what you need to actually create a motor object. You now for the first one, for example, it's a port. It's a got tell, tell um, pylons I'm going to use a port A. And after that, then uh, if you want to do something, for example, a motor, let's say you want to run something, you click a dot, you'll come out have a full list of all the options being provided by the motor. And we're going to use, let's say, one run uh, time. And this one would uh, show you different parameters you need to for this function to work. Let's say you specify something like uh, 750, uh, maybe 100, uh, 360 degree per second and the time make it uh, maybe um, uh, make it five, for example, 500 milliseconds. So something like this, while you're typing, balance would understand the code and give you the, uh, more like a reminder about how this function being used, what parameter is being used, that makes the coding a lot easier. And installing PyBricks would uh, give you all the code for pylons, for Python to understand that these are all the code. One thing I do want to point out, however, you probably have already noticed the code are all black or empty. The reason being is it's called a stub the code. It's not a real Py brick code, which only runs on the EV3 brick. This is all mean for um, debugging because you have this installed. When you debug your code, uh, like something like this, you can actually just run through here without any issue because everything is being well-defined. It's for debugging purpose, uh, but not a real code. Uh, Having it installed is very important because that would help you to, before you even try to unload to your robot, you would be able to try your program and then to step through them to, to, to make sure they actually work. No logical syntax error before you upload. But there's still one more thing. For something like this, I say, um, okay, I'm going to run the program. I'm going to download, I'm going to down, uh, connect again. Media, okay, the media motor should be fine. I don't want my robot to drive off my table. You probably can hear that, just pay attention. Oh, sorry, I need to click my robot here. So that's why it takes time to, to, to run the code actually on your robot. I will go to, to show you how to run the code on the PC without a robot. You hear that? So, the 500 millisecond, maybe maybe longer. I can make it twice. So I'm going to change it again to uh, let's say turn negative becomes the other direction. 720, double the speed, and I make it also run a bit longer. And run again. I am a robot. Yeah, you hear that? That's basically how you can show the motors. You can do the same thing with large motor. This just happens to be a medium motor. Um, there's still a problem. You know, what if you want to debug your code on computer? Right now you cannot do it. You know, I can put a breakpoint here, but whenever you try to run, it always download to the robot and run from the robot. Is there a way you can do it on your PC? Of course, you know, the answer almost to almost everything in this workshop is yes, you can. So come here, what you need to do is to create a new configuration. Now here's your configuration file. So there's one already. So whenever you run this, Whenever you try to debug, it's going to download to a robot first and run from a robot. Uh, but what you can do is to create a new configuration. Uh, just choose all the default settings, the Python, Python kernel file. You get a new block uh, to save it first. So after that, you'll see there's a new option here called a Python kernel file. Click this one and come here. Let's see how the magic works uh, to your main .py file. Now you press F5 again. To pay attention, we're not. It's not downloading, being downloaded to the robot anymore. And uh, from this moment on, you don't actually need the robot anymore. You can actually run your code on your computer. You can step through the code like this and step into your code. You see here, every line, every time you print something, it's actually you can step through the code line by line. Also check all the parameters uh, to see how the values work. Logo, uh, sorry. Let me 
it. Let me do it again. Again, by doing this, you don't even need your robot anymore because you can you are now running all the code. So you see the all the see the variables i equal to one now becomes uh, zero become one two three. So this is the way great way to to debug your code before even uploading it to your robot. That save a lot of time because you don't need to download. You don't need to uh, wait for the script to launch because everything happens on your PC uh, on your on your machine on your computer. And your computer understands your code very well, so you 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 can do a lot of programming even without your robot. With ongoing pandemics, very important because not everyone has access to a robot, and the programming on the robot itself is also much slower than using on PC. So that's the basic part about uh, how to use pylons. Everything I, before I wrap up, I think we're right at the time. But <clears throat> before I wrap up, uh, I want I uh, wrap up. I do want to show some. Uh, great example project that come with extension. Uh, the first one I want to show is the basic movement. You can just uh, choose all the default uh, name and uh, location. You don't need to change anything. Uh, same thing, because it's a brand new project, it's going to ask you to reload to use that the PyLens uh, language server. All this might look a bit of complex when it comes to setup, but the good thing is you only need to do it once. So you don't need to worry about it again uh, next time. So yeah, load again. So once you have it done, then you can focus on your programming by using all leveraging all the different tools, uh, but you don't need to go through it over and over again. So that's great. Just keep that in mind, even if uh, the steps are a bit complex, but after going through this once, you're all done. You don't need to change, do it again. So this program, you create a left motor, uh, right motor, large motor, you define a drive base, then you tell the, uh, the size of your views and the, 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 the width of your, 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 uh, your robot. Um, you can ask the robot to go forward and backward and do all different things. I'm going to run it, um, just uh, lift my robot up. I'm going to run it here. So you can hear, you probably can see it. You can see the wheels spin forward or backward and the uh, rotating in different ways. But this is all This is all the built-in program for you to show how to use the large uh, motor to, to navigate the robot around. See? Now it's uh, driving backward. And after that, I'm going to drive uh, forward. Um, and then it's going to rotate different rotation uh, direction to, to, to rotate. So let me stop here because uh, we are running out of time. And one more thing, uh, uh, actually two more uh, good example code I want to show uh, is the line following. So this one is also highly important when it comes to first level league uh, based on my experience. Um, then for this one, I make it short. Now I'm not going to load the, 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 the language server anymore because it's a new uh, new program. So what you can do, um, this one, you, you create a light, sen a light sensor uh, and you by measuring the light sensor value and the calculate the little bit of deviation, what you can do is you can use this one to follow a line on the map. Uh, it, it really does not take a lot of code to achieve that. There are a lot of more comments than actual code. And this is something also a very good example uh, reference for someone who wants to do line following by using uh, micro Python. The last but not least, because it takes a bit of time to actually load the Python code on the robot, uh, because of that, I highly recommend instead of keeping all the runs separate, because every time you run the code, it takes about a four to five seconds to start. If you have a five runs, you will take like a, like a waste of like 25 seconds just for waiting the code to start. So because of that, consider to use a manual system to just run the code once. And after that, just use the different buttons to choose which run to run. So that way you can save a lot of time. You can save up to 20 seconds of time, in case, assuming you have a five, uh, actually 25 seconds of time, assuming you have a five runs. So you just get it ready, put down to the launching area, then when, it starts, you just press one of the buttons. This is going to start right away. There's no need to wait. But to do that, you need a manual system for different menu uh, button mapped to different runs. And this is a great example to, for that. All right, that's pretty much wrapped up my presentation today. Let's come back to my slide. Any questions from anyone? I know it's a, it's a lot of content. You know, hopefully, 
I got everyone convinced that uh, MicroPython is really not scary. I really highly recommend uh, more team to give it a try and to see what you can do with it. And the learning curve for someone with uh, EV3 programming experience should be fairly reasonable, should not be steep at all. At all. And uh, by doing this, you will gain a lot to uh, learn Python, Python programming and how to uh, and, uh, work with your robot. And here, the, the last uh, slide with all the link I used in this demo, the uh, installation instruction, where to download the Python uh, interpreter, mm -hmm. Python uh, documentation. There's some interactive Python tutorial you can use to learn the basic Python um, language. Visual Studio Code, where to download different uh, two different um, plugin we used today, and uh, the way how to install the PyBrick stub uh, uh, library so you can use it for debugging on your computer. That's pretty much it. Um, I just want to say thank you for sharing um, all of this content with us because um, as someone who tried to learn coding in the past, it didn't really go too well because I was scared. But even during your presentation, I was taking notes and making sure that I you know, that I could push myself to learn all this stuff. And I'm really glad that, you know, you talked about um, um, Mac and um, Windows and, uh, oh, sorry, Windows and Apple and like talking about um, how you can code no matter what device you have. And I think that's really important for a lot of people to know. And I love how you're bringing up, like, again, we're in such a difficult situation with COVID and not many people are being able to code their robot. So I love how you brought up that, you know, you don't need to program a robot. You can just program whatever you like. And so um, I just want to say thank you for putting, um, giving your time up for such a wonderful presentation. Very informative. It got straight to the point. I really, really liked it. So thank you so much for that. So um, I'm, on my team, a lot of people are like, you have to be really good at math to be able to program. Can you say a few things on that? I don't necessarily agree. Uh, are you talking about the first robotic competition? Or yeah. uh, I'm not familiar with that uh, program too well, but when it comes to first level league, most of the time for the mission you need to accomplish are fairly straightforward. You don't actually need to write a lot of code, either the block or Python, um, Python code to accomplish those missions. And it has a lot to do with the uh, smart design attachment and put things together and the try um, and uh, uh, test and try. So I, I think that certainly is good to have. And the understanding the math and the, the basics certainly would help. I, I'm not saying you don't need math at all, but uh, you, don't be, you don't be very good at math to do most of the programming work, uh, put it that way. For some special cases, uh, understanding math would be very helpful, but it's not a, not a prerequisite, not a mandatory for most cases. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and like even um, talking about like programming, um, do you like, so you teach a lot of like your, um, of your um, teammates um, programming. Do you like, what's the common difficulty that they have with programming and how could, how can someone overcome difficulty when they're like learning Python or Java? Um, we, we are actually getting started. We kind of uh, just started the almost not not finished, but we're in the middle of the building the robot. And, and think I've been teaching my team uh, members to use the Studio 2.0 to build robot. So we are we'll be making progress here. That's been our primary focus for for a few weeks. Uh, we're getting started to do more, learn more Python, more programming. Uh, based on my experience, I think uh, well that's the one of the main reasons I, I introduced these different plugins and extension tools. Debugging could be a bit of a frustrating, especially for beginners. They write something, write some code, but it doesn't work. They don't really know where to start. Uh, they, they don't quite fully understand the error message either, because sometimes the error message could be misleading. Because for the first example I gave, the error says you have something wrong on 15, line 15. The actual problem is on actually 14, line 15, uh, line 14. So for something like that, um, for experienced uh, programmers, it's very straightforward. For beginners, it could be frustrating. So that's why I try to use the tool, introduce this tool to make programming and debugging as simple as possible. I mentioned about the pylons. It sounds a bit of a 
uh, what's the name for them, like nerdy. Uh, but but really, you think about that as a, your coding body, your coding assistant, helping you like consistently to help you to see if there's some potential errors with your code. That could make a day and a night, uh, night difference because you can even see the problems in your code without even trying to run it. That would make a huge difference, especially for beginners. Uh, hopefully, this type of tool would help the my team member later ones to overcome the, um, the beginning phase of learning a new language. It's certainly more involved um, compared to EV3, but I think it's also totally worth it. Mm -hmm.